Welcome, I'm Ian Baker, and today I have an amazing video for you as we're gonna cover how to bring in your slides manually if they're stuck open. This is something that I know a lot of people fear, uh, whether your battery died or your motor failed. Well, today I'm gonna go over the three main slide systems. We'll go over cable slides, through frame slides, as well as a worm gear driven, also commonly known as Schwintech slides, and show you how to bring all three of them in so you're not stuck out at your campsite. So how do you identify the type of slide your RV has? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's start with cable slides. If your RV has cable slides, you will see a cable like this on all four corners of your slide out. Next up is a Schwintech, also known as a worm gear slide. You'll identify these by, well, seeing this worm gear system. Now, depending on the size of the slide, you may have two of these, where you'll have one on the bottom and one up top, or if it's a large slide like this one, you will see they have two up top. Lastly, we have a through frame or rack and pinion style slide. You'll identify that quickly by simply looking at the big arms underneath the slide box. Up first, the good old cable slide. So to bring the cable slide in, you're going to need three main tools. The first one being a drill. The second one is a flex bit. You can see the flex in it. This will come with your RV. If you do not have one, you're going to need to get one. The last part is this right here, which is a square number three bit. So this torque bit is actually what's going to go into the motor, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So you have two different options, really, of how to access the motor. The motor itself will be located right about in the center behind this fascia. So what I recommend, if you're in warranty, just remove this fascia, it makes it really easy to get to that motor, take it into the service center, they will put that fascia back up for you after they do whatever work they need to do. Obviously, because you're in warranty, it is covered. If you're not in warranty, if you want to take the slide fascia off and you want to re-brad nail it up, cover up the nail holes, by all means do so. Again, it will make it easy and it might be your only option depending on your RV. But otherwise, what you can do is you can take this bit, again, you kind of go in the middle of the slide, feel around for that motor, and then you will slide this bit in the back of the motor. I actually have a cutaway and I'll go show you exactly what we're working with right now. So this is actually in the Camping World Technical Institute, but it is uh, essentially a slide. So we have a cable slide right here. Once the fascia is removed, this is what you'll see. You'll see the cables running to either side with the pulleys at both ends, and then your slide system in the middle, assuming that you have the AccuSlide cable slide system, which is far and above the most common cable slide system out there. But what you're looking for is you're looking to take that square number three bit and you'll put it right here in the end of the motor. So again, if you're reaching over, you'll have to reach over and find that and put that in place. Once that is in place, you'll then take your flex bit, put that over like so, bend it up and around that slide fascia, and then put that in your drill. Now you'll wanna put it, uh, you wanna put your drill to be going counterclockwise like you are removing a screw and that, As you'll see, we'll bring the slide in. Once it's in, you're all set, you can remove it. That will allow you to safely get to a service center so they can diagnose what's going on. Luckily, the Schwintech is arguably the easiest slide to override because all you need for a tool is this bad boy right here. What you're gonna do uh, is actually find the control box. That's probably the hardest part of overriding it. On a motor home, a lot of times that will be in a compartment underneath the slide. On most of your fifth wheels and travel trailers, it will be inside the unit, again, usually down low. For example, in this RV we're in, it is actually located right down here behind this uh, slide fascia on the bottom. This right here is the box you are looking for. Um, as you will see, it might be a little tough to read here, but you can find it in the owner's manual as well. There are different faults, and more often than not, if your slide is not working, as I mentioned, it's generally not a mechanical issue. It's something happened with the controller, the motors got out of sync, uh, didn't count the revolutions correctly, something happened, and a lot of times you will see that fault right here based upon how many times this uh, light is blinking. Now, to manually override it, it actually shows you, and it says it right on here. It's nice and simple. Um, and it, in case you forget, it shows you, you're gonna push the button six times, hold down on the seventh, press until the lights start to flash. And then you will use the normal slide control switch located inside to retract the room. So that button is right there. That's why we have our pen. We're gonna, then you're gonna push and hold just like that. And you're gonna hold it until the lights blink. Uh, I'm not gonna do it in this particular case, but you'll wanna push it until the lights start blinking. That will let you know you're in manual override, and then you will simply hit that retract button. Now, 
There are some other things you can do as well. Uh, I personally don't recommend them just because you can cause damage to your RV. Um, I have been told, I've never tested it, but you can flip these two around right here. These are your switch controls, okay? Your extend and retract. If you flip those around, it will reverse the controls on the switch. Sometimes that will, for whatever reason, reset it and help bring it back in, in the event this doesn't work. The reason I don't recommend doing that, folks, is as soon as you take these off, you remove the stops on this unit and you can cause a lot of damage to your slides. If you bring it in too far, you can damage the outside. If you extend it too far, you can actually drop the slide box out of the side of your RV and that is obviously something we certainly don't want to have happen. Next up and possibly the most arduous depending on your setup is going to be the rack and pinion, also known as a through frame slide with an electric motor. Uh, not necessarily hydraulic, that's a whole nother animal altogether, but with the electric motor. And the reason it can be arduous is because there's a couple different ways you may have to go about it. The first method and probably the most unlucky is having to cut a hole in your underbelly because no matter what methodology we use, we have to be able to get to the electric actuator motor. Um, and if you don't have a quick hookup, which I'll show you in just a second, then that's what you have to do. You have to cut a hole in the underbelly. In order to kind of find where that motor is located, you're gonna look for this arm right here, follow it straight across the other side of the RV, come back probably about a foot or so from the frame and cut a hole there and you should be in a pretty close location. Now, if you're luckier, the through frame slide system you have will actually have an extension rod that is tied to that electric actuator motor. One of the easiest ways to identify it is you will find that there is a hex nut right here coming out of that frame and you will usually have a hole something like this in the flashing so that you can take the tool that comes with the RV and be able to put it right in there and attach it to that hex nut. Now, regardless of the methodology you have to use, whether it has the extension, whether you have to cut a hole in the underbelly to get to the motor, with both systems you should disconnect the battery so you don't have any back feed. If you do have this system, once it's on there, you will actually turn clockwise, and that will slowly but surely bring in your slide. All right, folks, and that wraps it up on how to manually override your slide systems, at least the major three. Obviously, there's some other slide systems out there that we didn't cover, but hopefully this right here will get you by with the majority of your slides. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. Also, if you know anyone that can use this information, if they have an RV, make sure you share this video with them so they can save it for later use. And if you wanna to continue to see more how-to and troubleshooting information or any content that we offer, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified and be one of the first ones to see the brand new content. Thanks again for watching, folks. I'm Ian Baker, and until next time, we'll see you.